everybody, this is Sue with Salvaterra Pottery and we are going to throw mugs today. We make several different kinds of mugs, so I'll show you some of the different ones we make and some different colors. And then I'll show you how we actually throw our medium mug. So this is our travel mug. It is in our new Red Horizon glaze with red and a cream color and then a black and green spray on it. So that's our travel mug. That's a brand new item this year. And then we also have our wide mouth mug, which is a very popular mug that we customize a lot of times for folks. Um, we've probably done over a hundred different custom mugs for people with this mug. And then this is the mug I call the manly manly mug. Actually, we call it the tall mug, but um, the men just love this mug. It holds about two and a half, three cups of liquid. It has a little thumb button on it that everybody loves for leverage. It has an oversized handle so you really get your hand in it and that's why the men love it because it has a big handle that they can put their hand in. So that's our tall mug. And the one I'm going to show today is this one, how to throw it. It's the same shape as our tall mug, it's just smaller and I call it our medium mug. This is the first shape mug I started throwing and um, it's been a steady eddy for 20 plus years. So we pull the handle where it's wider on the top than it is on the bottom and give a nice ample uh, space for several fingers. And this holds about 12 ounces, so that would be a cup and a half. So let's go ahead and start throwing this one. Okay, so I use three quarters pound of clay to throw my medium mug. So let me clean off my bat. Don't get it too wet. The plate won't stick to it. And throw your ball down on the bat. So when I throw these, I throw at least 24 of these at a time. Um, I'm a production potter, so when we make something, we make a bunch of it and then we switch over to something else. So this is the first one of probably 24 today. Okay, so there we go. We've got it pretty much centered. I like doing this tea thing. I think I've shown you all before, but if you haven't seen the other videos. So here we go. This helps just put pressure on the top and keep the sides steady. And there's our centered little pot. Okay, or beginning of pot. Down the middle I go. And I like to leave about a quarter of an inch on the bottom. And I know from experience just you know how far down to go the only way you get better at making a pot do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again and um, if you're gonna buy pottery I always recommend that you buy pottery from a seasoned potter because even in a lifetime of throwing pots it's you only scratch the surface so um, you get a better pot most of the time from a potter that's been making pots for years and years and has learned a lot of the tricks to the trade. Um, like don't put lead in your pot, which I think everybody knows at this point, but um, or don't use cadmium or how to fire, how to make your glaze fit your pot appropriately. Okay, so here's our second pull. You can see where I'm starting to create the shape. I like to keep the top in because if I let that top go wild and start flaring out, it's practically impossible to bring it back in. It's just easier to throw with the top more narrow than the bottom and then eventually create the shape that you want. All right, here's the third pull. There we go. And the wall should be the same, for the most part, from the bottom to the wall top. So I mean the wall, I mean the thickness of this all the way up should be about the same. So when we start throwing, we start throwing with cylinders. That's how most teachers start because everything comes from cylinder. And um, we weren't allowed to throw anything else but straight up and down cylinders until we cut open all our pots and the teacher was happy enough with the evenness of our walls and then she let us move on to the next thing. So, um, 
hated doing it. It breaks your heart when you're beginning potter to cut your pots open. You want to keep them and glaze them because they're the most precious pots you'll ever make or the first ones that you make. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, her doing that made me a better potter because till this day, I think about that and I know that I've got nice, even walls. Okay, so that is our mug. And you know what? I'm going to cut it open for you. We'll see how it did. After all that bragging about even walls, right? Okay, I'm going to cut it straight down the middle. This is what we had to do in school. Straight down the middle. Let's see. Oh, I got stuck. Well, there you go. I don't know if you can see that, but from the bottom to the top, the walls are pretty much the same. And it was being able to support itself like that. So that's what you're striving for. Uh, beginner mistakes will be really heavy on the bottom and really thin on the top. And uh, it takes practice to be able to get it all the same thickness all the way up. But not a bad mug if I didn't cut it, that is. So we're gonna throw that one away and we will uh, keep throwing. So I still have 24 more mugs to make since I cut that one out, cut that one for you, but I wanted to show you what I was talking about. Um, that is the goal to strive for. So um, I think that's it today for mugs. Tomorrow we will put the handles on them. I have promised you that I will pull handles and put the put that up and then I have a special little cheat on making really beautiful handles that are cold so I will try to do that tomorrow on these mugs for you in the meantime I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel or go visit our website at salvaterrapottery.com thank you so much for stopping in we'll see you next time bye